Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today we're on the test server for patch 9.7. This is a really amazing patch in my opinion with some great changes, new additions to the game, finally we get some new tanks again and as you can see a new tier 10 medium is among those tanks as well. But we will take a look at this AMX 30B and the tanks that lead up to it in a second. Before we do that, I just want to quickly show you something else. And before I do that, I want to quickly state a disclaimer here and just want to remind you basically that this is the test server and obviously it's fair to test the changes and then evaluate that test and according to that evaluation maybe make changes so things that I say might not be correct anymore in a week's time because they make changes to the new content and that's why you just shouldn't rely on what I say. This is just supposed to be a quick sneak peek not a reliable source of information basically. So now that we've got that out of the way, we can have a look at the new HD model starting out with the uh, IS-4. I'm really glad that this tank's seeing some love because I personally own one on the live server and I think this HD model looks absolutely amazing. It's a lovely bit of work they did on it. Next we've got the tier 5 Panzer IV. I don't really think this looks too remarkable. I don't know, there's not that much detail on it. But it's not bad, like, I don't want to complain. It's still nice. But E100. I think they just cannot put as much detail into these vehicles that were not produced in history, actually. Like the Jagdpanzer E100 or the E100. Like, they were only prototypes or designs. And they were never mass-produced. So probably they cannot copy the in-game models from actual historical tanks as they could with the IS-4 for example so that's probably the reason why there isn't that much detail on these tanks still they look really really nice these models and then finally we've got our favorite little tier 5 tank the ELC AMX also got a visual update so that's nice okay now that we've got that out of the way we can start to talk about the really interesting stuff which is the new French vehicles and if we have a look at the tech tray, I already uploaded a preview video of these tanks two weeks ago actually. But this is basically more detailed now because we can actually see them in the tech tree. We've got at tier 2, two new tanks, the FCM-36 and the R-35. Then at tier 3, we've got the Somnia S-35 followed by the SARL-42 and the G-1R. I'm not going to go into detail about these tanks because... I mean, I don't want to make this video too long, and they are not really that interesting or unique. I mean, it's good to have some low-tier tanks, but I'm personally not really too excited about these vehicles. And if you are, you'll be able to play them in a few weeks' time anyway. A really interesting change is that we've got two new high-tier French vehicles, and that is a second medium tank branch. They divide up after the AMX 1390, so you can decide whether you want to go for the Lorraine 40T or the AMX 30 prototype. And basically the difference between these two tank lines will be that the batch out of the Lorraine got an autoloader clip, are very fast, have got no armor. And these new tanks, the AMX-30 prototype and the AMX-30B, they are very similar to the German mediums like the Leopard 1 and the Leopard prototype A because they haven't got any armor either. I mean, they've got better armor than the Batch Hat and the Lorraine, but it's not much better. They're very maneuverable, although they're not quite as fast as the Batch Hat and the Lorraine. And they haven't got autoloaders but single shotguns. I personally really enjoyed playing these two tanks and I just want to quickly highlight their stats. So first of all we will talk about the AMX-30, I think this is premier prototype in French. So first of all the prototype gets 1650 hit points. That is not too much, I mean it's not terrible, especially considering that this is a French vehicle. It could be a lot worse, but 1650 isn't great and most other T9 medium tanks get more hit points. It's quite light at 32 tons. It's got a very meaty engine, 720 horsepower, allowing this tank to go at 65 kilometers per hour and giving it a poverty weight ratio of 21.85, which is actually even better than the poverty weight ratio of AMX-30B at tier 10. 
So this tank is really agile, it is really fast, but one drawback is that the traverse speed of the hull is kind of disappointing compared to other medium tanks. And it's not proportional to this tank's speed and acceleration. So what that means is that you have to plan in advance when you want to take turns. It's not terrible traverse speed, but it could be better. The armor is not very great. It's 80 millimeters at the front of the hull and the turret. However, you might notice that this vehicle's got quite a nice gun shield. And actually, it's not like with the Leopard 1, say, where it looks like it's got a good gun shield, but really it doesn't. This gun mount has actually got some armor. It's not a lot, but I think it's about something like 100 millimeters. And with the angling on it, you will be able to bounce a few shots. Although the armor on the hull is really thin, it's angled amazingly well. So you will actually get the occasional bounce in this tank. Side armor 40 and 30 is basically paper thin and anything will penetrate that. Same thing goes for 30mm thick rear armor. Next, the gun, in my opinion, is one of the best things about this vehicle. It uses the same 105mm that's also used on the tier 10 tank. Obviously, the stats are not quite as good as on the tier 10 because it's a tier lower, but the rate of fire is 6.06, .06, which is actually really good for a tier 9 tank with a 105mm gun. It's not quite as good as the Type 61's rate of fire, the Japanese tier 9, but it is way better than that of the Centurion 7 slash 1 and the Leopard prototype. So that is really good. Your reload time will be just above 8 seconds in game with equipment mounted. So that is very nice. The penetration is amazing at 260 millimeters. That is just super good penetration at tier 9. Alpha damage 390 is standard for a 105mm gun, that's actually really nice at tier 9 as well. 0.33 accuracy is very good, and the 2.3 second aiming time is not amazing for a medium tank, but it is alright. And these are super impressive gun stats on a tier 9 tank. This vehicle gets 2364 damage per minute at tier 9, and this is just very good news on a tier 9 tank having this gun. So the turret reverse speed is 44 degrees, that is very good. View range 390 is standard at tier 9 and 750 meters signal range is average as well. So in my opinion this tank is insane really at tier 9. I think this will be the best tier 9 medium tank, maybe the second best after the T-54. We'll have to see how it turns out when it goes live, but right now, I mean, I played a few games in the test server and this tank is amazing. I really, really like this machine and at the moment, I think this is probably my favorite tier 9 medium tank in the game and it will be stiff competition for the T-54. Later on also, I will be showing you some gameplay of this tank. Moving up to tier 10, we've got the AMX-30B. This is the tank that was actually produced and saw service in the French army. And this tank I will be comparing to the German tier 10 Leopard 1, because the Leopard 1 is really the main competition for the AMX-30B. So off the bat, we can see that the Leopard 1 gets slightly more health, 50 hit points more is not too much. The Leopard 1 is heavier though, which means that it takes better to ramming than the AMX 30B, but really you should avoid ramming engagements in both of these tanks. However, the Leopard 1 gets 110 more horsepower, which is a lot. And that means that the party weight ratio on the Leopard, although it's heavier, is actually slightly better than on the AMX 30B, although both these tanks get really good party weight ratio. The top speed is 65 kilometers on both of them and we've got a traverse speed of 48 compared to 54. That is better on the Leopard 1, however the traverse speed is still really good on the AMX 30B and it will really feel like a relief after playing the prototype having the better traverse speed. Next we'll talk about the armor and on paper 70 millimeters compared to 80 millimeters doesn't really look like that much of a difference. but if we compare the angling on the upper glacius of the AMX 30B, compare that to the Leopard 1, it is way better angle. And you probably won't be able to bounce any tier 10 guns with this upper glacius, but against some lower tier, tier 8 tanks, maybe even some tier 9 tanks, if you angle your hull, they might ricochet sometimes. 
you should not rely on your armor in the AMX 30B, but it's not bad. And actually, the angling on the 30B is even better than on the prototype, because the prototype's got this extra section here, which is a bit less sloped than the rest of the hull. On the turret front, it is way better news for the AMX 30B, because it gets 80 millimeters rather than 52. And I cannot confirm this, but I believe that the gun shield of the AMX 30B is something like 120 millimeters thick. So when you engage the AMX 30B, you cannot just randomly shoot it anywhere. You actually have to aim your shots at the hole or the turret cheeks. And that is a huge advantage that the 30B has got over the Leopard 1 because with the Leopard you can just shoot it anywhere and it will penetrate. And the gun mantlet is paper thin as well, just as the rest of the turret. So that is a big advantage of the 30B right there. Side and rear armor, however, is really bad on both these tanks. It's actually even better on the Leopard than on the 30B. So that means that you cannot even side scrape or angle the tank properly playing as a 30B because with 35mm of side armor on the hull, any gun at tier 10 will overmatch your armor. So you have to be really careful. Then the guns. So on the right side, we've got the 30B's gun on the left, the Leopard 1's gun. Leopard 1 gets slightly better rate of fire, which also means that it gets better DPM 2690 rather than 2630, but the difference is negligible. The penetration is marginally better on the 30B, but again, it doesn't make that much of a difference. The Leopard 1, however, gets better premium ammo penetration and high explosive penetration is the same. Damage, obviously, is exactly the same on both these guns. The accuracy is the same as well. 0.3 is amazing. That's the best accuracy in the game, along with tanks like the Leopard 1, the E50M. So 0.3 is just super good. And then also you get 2.1 second aiming time, which is short as well. However, it's not quite as short as the aiming time of the Leopard 1, but the standards that the Leopard 1 sets are so high that, you know, even if it's worse than the Leopard 1, it still is really good. So when it comes to the gun, although it is overall slightly inferior to the Leopard 1's gun, you're still definitely in for a treat because the stats are really, really good. The view range is 410, which is above average at tier 10, actually, and the same as the Leopard 1's view range, so you will be able to do some good spotting in this tank. View range is 750, which is standard. So, all in all, playstyle-wise, I haven't actually quite made my mind up yet how to play this tank. It gets really good gun depression of, I think, it's probably between... 8 and 10 degrees. I haven't really got any numbers on this yet, but it is very good gun depression. So the playstyle is actually very similar to the Leopard 1's playstyle, but you can be more aggressive early on in the game in the 30B, because if you find a hold down position, you can rely on your armor more than the Leopard 1 can. Don't take me wrong here, you should never rely on your armor when you're driving for 30B. It is quite thin, but still it is better than the Leopard 1, which gives you some tactical opportunities. One big drawback, though, that the 30B has in hold down positions is this massive tumor of a cupola that it has. Compared to the Leopard 1, it is just huge. Like, Leopard 1's got a very sleek turret, and when you come over ridge lines, then this will be quite a problem for you. But the thing you have to remember is that it's not like people will take advantage of this because they cannot penetrate the rest of your tank. So it's not like a actual weak spot, really, because, I mean, your entire tank is a weak spot. So it's not really good news, but it's kind of not as bad as you might think. So, I mean, I haven't really experienced too many people taking advantage of this cupola, but it is definitely an issue when you try to go hold down. Yeah, I don't really want to spend too much time talking in the garage in this video because, I mean, you're probably mainly here to see some gameplay, so I've got a great game in the prototype and also in the 30B for you guys, so stay tuned and we'll head out to the battlefield. So our first game of the day will be featuring the 
AMX30 prototype as promised. We've spawned on Highway in a tier 9 match on the test server which surprised me but actually I almost exclusively got tier 10 game, uh, tier 9 games in this vehicle. Now you can see right here the really good gun depression on this tank. I'm using these bushes here. This is a very nice position for accurate fast moving vehicles in my opinion. Uh, and we hit our first shot against an enemy AMX 3090 who's taken out of the game by our light tank allies. I'm trying to find a shot on that T44 right now, but I can't quite get him into my focus because he's behind the building. Now he makes this move, and I'm being very cautious here. The reason why I'm being cautious is because there very often or almost always are tank destroyers camping that ridge line. Now I got spotted, I decide to move forwards into cover behind these buildings because I'm really terrified of enemies up here. And now it looks like we're just going to rush this T-44. So I decide to commit to that and because I am very fast I just hope that I'll be able to evade some fire coming from the ridge line. And yeah, we managed to finish him off. But sure enough, a Lorraine 40T is spotted down in the valley and also two enemy tank destroyers. Now, the Waffentrager of Panzer Fear is outside of our render distance. That wasn't very clever of me there, because I was spotted and I came out of cover, poked against those two tank destroyers and took a shot. That I took a blind shot at the Torches, but that quite definitely didn't hit. Now we can see another tier 9 AMX-30 uh, making a run through the centre of the map, and we spot the Waffentrager. So take one shot, I think that one went a bit down and to the right, so I don't think that one hit probably. Now I could be loading high explosive shells right here, but I just want to be more versatile in case, for example, the Lorraine or the torches are spotted. And now I make a decision because I realise that we're outnumbered quite heavily on this flank, and if that AMX-30 who was last spotted somewhere down there in the town, makes his way around our flank, then we'll be in a really bad situation because that will allow those three tier 9 tanks over there to advance and we'll be caught in a kind of a pincer move. So I decide that it's time to change flanks basically because it's just way too risky staying around here. And I'm just going to speed up the replay a bit here um, because well what happens is not that exciting, I just drive around the map basically. Our uh, Allied artillery manages to actually take out the enemy AMX-30 prototype he was flanking around and uh, yeah, thus the odds have really swung into our favour this game. Score 74 and yeah, I'm basically really what I could do right now is I could go into the town where my allies are but I realise that all these vehicles here on our right side, we'll be making a run for it now, so I decide to cut off a retreat. Now, this Waffen trigger is going to get a shot into me right now, not that much I can do about that, but it was still worth because we managed to take him out. That was probably the most dangerous tank on the enemy vehicle, uh, on the enemy team, not vehicle, sorry, <laughs> removed from the game, so yeah, and uh, right here you can just see how good this gun is. And I'm not sure about this, I haven't got any stats on it. But I really feel like the accuracy on the move is just superb on these new French medium tanks. And as I said, I cannot confirm this, but I mean, like, you know, what else can I say to that? That was a complete, like, almost complete clutch shot, but we made it hit. And I think with snapshot and uh, smooth ride and also with... Uh, vertical stabilizer. The accuracy on the move in this on these new tanks is just going to be so good. I I mean maybe if you guys know some stats about this, please let me know. But that's just the impression I got from playing these vehicles on the test server. I spot the tortoise. I realize that I'm just two shots. He can kill me in two shots. So I decide not to engage him, but go for the artillery instead. Take a shot, and now I retreat. To try to evade his shot but 
looks like he's already fired and is reloading, so I managed to pick up my fourth kill. And now there's only the Lorraine and the Tortoise left. We know where the Tortoise is, but we're not sure where the Lorraine is, and either of them could kill us in a one-on-one -on -one engagement. Maybe if Lorraine got lucky and I missed my first shot at him or something, that could be a problem. So I realised that the Tortoise isn't aiming my way because the tank's got a very bad traverse speed. Now that the Lorraine's swatted, I can confidently flank round the Tortoise, uh, forcing this guy into a situation where he cannot point his frontal, uh, f face his front of his tank to all enemies engaging him. So he obviously decides to face his thickest armour towards uh, the direction where the most enemies are coming from, which allows me to get great flanking shots into his side. And now he's turning my way, but basically I just realised that I can take one shot from him with my hit point pull. That's what I do, and I take him out with my last shot, picking up my fifth kill. And in my opinion, that game was really representative of how versatile this tank is, how manoeuvrable it is, because we basically traversed the entire map in that game. And I think the thing about the AMX30 prototype that this replay showcased the best was the accuracy on the move when we took some snapshots at enemy tanks on the D and E lines. And that, in my opinion, is probably the main strength of these new tanks, is the accuracy on the move. But as I said, I haven't got any stats on this yet, so it's just an impression I got. But I don't want to waffle on for ages here, let's have a look at the post-game stats to find out how well exactly we did. So here are the results of our skirmish in the Premier prototype, and we got a second class mastery badge, 52,000 credits and almost 3,200 experience, although that experience score was only achieved by a times 2 multiplier for our first victory of the day. Still, we managed to base 1,063 experience points, which is quite nice, considering that this was actually my first game ever in the prototype. And also we got 3,600 damage, which is quite a healthy amount in a tier 9 match, and the most that any tank in the game got. We fired 18 shots, which 15 hit their target, and 12 penetrated. That's actually a bit disappointing in my opinion. I had hoped for a better result just from looking at the stats of this gun. But I mean still this is not a bad ratio, especially considering that a lot of the damage we dealt came from shots from over 300 meters range. That was 1,400 damage. Together with the rest of our damage that amounted up to 3,600 hit points. We received 4 hits, all 4 penetrated, which is a bit disappointing. I had actually hoped for a slightly better result, like maybe 1 ricochet at least in this tank, but we didn't get it. So we can learn from this that although the armour is better than on its French brother, the Lorraine, and as on the Leopard 1 and the Leopard prototype, the armour is still not reliable at all, and although you will sometimes get lucky and bounce something, you cannot rely on it. We spotted one vehicle, hooray, and damaged 6, destroyed 5, so quite a good result there. 52,000 credits earned is not is actually quite a lot, but our ammunition and repair costs were huge, meaning that we could only keep 15,000 credits and that's a pattern you'll quite commonly find on high tier tanks is that running them is very expensive. So all in all still this game was just really good and actually all my games in the prototype were really enjoyable and I really like this tank but we don't want to linger at tier 9 we've still got the AMX 30B itself to look at so let's head out to the battlefield and have a look how the new edition at tier 10 performs. So here we go, game number two on mines and this is a great map for this tank because Thanks to your great speed, you can get up to the hill and uh, with a good gun depression you can take some good shots from there. But you can also see that the two bat shots are really out accelerating these two AMX 30s that we've got right here. So yeah, the power to weight ratio really does, you can really feel it. So I know that this bat shot is still clipping, so I can advance quite safely. 
and take him out. I take one shot because he managed to load his magazine just before we managed to take him out. But, I mean, that's totally worth it considering that we took out a very dangerous and maneuverable autoloader tank right there. So I'll try to get some shots off at this Fosh and sure enough our great penetration and aiming time and accurate not penetration, I mean uh, accuracy and aiming time allow us to put multiple shots into the uh, cupola or actually the rangefinder of that Fosh. So that's quite nice and if you think that maybe if you were driving another tank with worse aim, uh, with worse accuracy or aiming time, you wouldn't have been able to do that. For example, in one of the Russian vehicles or the M48 Patton, we take a massive shot from the GWE100. So we're going to try to get back at him for that. And uh, here we go. And sure enough, we finish him off, getting our third kill. So. Now we're going to see if we can work these two T95s because they are really tough nuts to crack frontally but from the rear they're quite weakly armoured so we should be able to get some good work here, uh, get some good damage here. And as you can see the gun depression is absolutely amazing on the AMX 30. And, oh my god that was such a poor shot. So um, yeah let's see if we can get a better one in this time and sure enough the reason why I'm not going for this other T95 is because I want to focus down one of them first we get lucky with our roll there finishing on off with 399 damage and now we can focus on the other tanks however I'm a bit anxious about that FE215B on my flank because I'm afraid if I come out too far that he's gonna shoot me that's why I don't quite hit the bat shot there. Now however I am going to just go for him straight away. That was not exactly a very good shot. Actually I'm not sure why but it hit the rock. That was just a weird kind of hitbox. But uh, yeah therefore we get the bat shot so that's alright. And uh, yeah, this guy's burning and actually we set him on fire. So that's our fifth kill and a very a round that was over very quickly right there. So I showed you this game because it showcased the strengths of the AMX-30 really well with its great gun depression, great accuracy and maneuverability. Thanks to my good speed and acceleration, I was able to get to the hill quickly. Then I was able to snipe the enemy artillery thanks to my good aiming time and accuracy and then the good gun depression was showcased by me being able to take shots at the rears of these T95 tank destroyers. So let's skip to the post battle results screen to evaluate how well exactly we did in that game so I'll see you in a second. So here are the results of the tier 10 match again north of 50,000 credits earned and 1,506 experience this time without times 2 but with a premium account again a second class mastery badge and 1,400 base experience which is quite nice 3,071 damage dealt which is slightly less than in the last game and actually we didn't do the most damage in the team but particular honour went to the bat shot 25t dealing almost 3200 damage but we got the most frags so that is quite nice we fired 15 shots 13 hit 11 penetrated which is not bad but again i would have hoped for more just from looking at the stats 3071 damage is very nice however i have to highlight here that none of that damage was caused from more than 300 meters range so if we consider that this result up here with 13 of 15 hitting is actually even more disappointing but I don't really think that was down to the gun itself or the tank being bad but just my bad aim really. We received two hits of which obviously all two penetrated so again that just showcases the underwhelming armour of these new tanks and this time we actually managed to spot two instead of one enemy vehicle so hooray. Yeah. Ammunition, resupply and repairs were very expensive as always in the tier 10 tank, so uh, no surprises there. Now all we've got to talk about really is whether 
the new French tanks are good and whether I think that you should get them, basically. And in my opinion, the AMX-30 prototype, the Tier 9 tank, in its tier performs slightly better than the AMX-30B does at Tier 10. So it is just a better Tier 9 tank when the 30B is a Tier 10 tank. But the difference is not that big and it really doesn't mean that the 30B is a bad tank because as amazing as the Tier 9 prototype is, the AMX-30B could be way worse and still be an awesome tank if you get what I mean. The Tier 9 vehicle is just so much fun to drive and I had a blast playing it. I didn't have a single bad game the entire time I played this tank on the test server. In my opinion, the AMX-30 prototype is probably the new best Tier 9 medium tank. The T-54 is obviously quite strong competition. We'll have to see how that pans out when the tank goes live. But right now I just enjoy playing the prototype so, so much. And, I mean, the same thing really goes for the 30B, although I must say that I didn't have quite as good a time driving the 30B than I had driving the prototype. But I don't really think that was the fault of the tank, but just down to me not performing so well as a player. Still, I think the 30B is an amazing tank, it's a blast to play, and just the fact that it has got that gun mantlet, with uh, about 120mm of armour, which, considering the angling, amount up to something like 200mm, means that your enemies won't be able to just randomly shoot you anywhere, but have to aim your shots and actually really think about where they are going to shoot you. And they cannot just blast you in the face at random, just like they can when they engage, say, a Leopard 1. So that is a really big advantage, and in my opinion, it really compensates for the slightly inferior gun that the 30B gets in comparison to the Leopard 1's gun and losing some maneuverability in compared to the German tank. So is the 30B better than the Leopard 1? Uh, I don't really think so. I think the Leopard 1 is still a really good tank and I think both tanks have just got the same effectiveness in their tier. But the 30B is a bit more brawling oriented than the Leopard 1. So should you get the 30B? I mean, if you enjoy playing tanks like the Leopard 1, the FV4202, or even the Batcha, then probably the 30B will be the tank for you. I'm definitely going to pick one up for myself, even if only to play through this awesome Tier 9 tank. But, I mean, the Tier 10 tank is a real treat as well. I really enjoy these tanks. Obviously, if you aren't really into lightly armoured fast tanks, but prefer something more heavy and sturdy, then maybe the 30B is not exactly the tank for you. But if you like speed, if you like firepower, accuracy and flexibility on the battlefield, then I can definitely recommend the 30B if it stays the way it is right now. I think it's quite balanced and fits in really well with all the other tier 10 medium tanks at the moment. But please let me know what you think about this tank. Do you maybe think it's underpowered or overpowered? Or do you agree with me when I say it's balanced? And how do you think it compares to tanks like the Leopard 1 and the Batshot, which will probably be its main competition? I'm really looking forward to reading through your opinions in the comments. And I hope this video could give you a first impression and overview of the new French tanks. And maybe I'll see you in one of my next videos or even on the battlefield. Bye bye.